GB forty one SCE natural. And you used you used this on the record. Yes. What do you think of it? It's got a nice warm tone to it. It's not like an electric bass that has a you know a st not sterile but it's a different totally different animal. Uh, more woody natural tone. Um, more resonance. So you go direct, you take the bass, even the acoustic one direct. Yeah, a and uh, I think I use more of that than the live, but when the, <clears throat> yeah, move, move on up a little bit, keep on going, there you go, sir, a little bit. This is an acoustic bass, and that's what we use on the record. Uh, if you were doing, if you're doing a, a traditional bass, you, you can do the direct line and and the amp, we we did direct line and mic too. So mainly we use the um, the mic just for more body, and then direct line for a little bit. Pass if you can scoot over this way a little bit. Which this mic way? are you using? Uh, this one I'm going to use. I'm going to use the uh, ATA 4050 on loan to me from my uh, friend Atsy. So I'm going to use a um, cardioid pickup pattern. Don't need to don't need to uh, to do anything else with that, and then. We don't need to do any cutting, any cutting on this, any uh, any uh, frequency cutting whatsoever. We want to keep it nice and bassy sounding. So let's try to it's a couple different techniques, just like an acoustic guitar, where you can you can start starting points. One way is uh, to start with it aiming right there, right where the body meets meets the uh, the neck, right there. You can try that. Also, you can come at the bridge. You don't want to go in the in the sound hole. That's just going to sound all boomy and boxy. You can aim right here or right here. And uh, with this, uh, we're mainly going to use a direct line. So this is just a little bit of aesthetic uh, aestheticness. So let's hear how it sounds right there. If you don't like it, we'll move it. Down. It's a real low signal, so that's the amp. Uh, that's the uh, mic. And that's the direct line, which is mainly what we're going to use. So let's focus on this for a minute. Keep on playing, bass. Keep on playing, please. A little bit of a boxiness that I want to get rid of. Right around 188, didn't like that too much. I need a little more clarity in it. That's pretty good. And then uh, using the uh, DBX compressor, so 160X is really good on it. That's smash, which I don't want to do, but it's touching up a little bit. And let's hear them together. You can almost hear the, immediately that it's out of phase, so let's... I just push phase in, you can hear the low end come back. Compression ratio with bass, you can go a little higher. You can even go 6 to 1 if you'd like to. I'd like to, uh, to give it a good, uh, good smack right there. I'm hitting it pretty hard, and that's fine. That's a lot better. Now let's hear the amp. Uh, I'm sorry, the, it's on the amp, the mic. How's that sounding? Sounds a lot better. Keep on going, please. Pull the phase in and out to check it real quick. Now this is an acoustic bass, so this yeah. is a question that maybe doesn't relate to. And it's it's a little difficult. It's it's kind of hard to record too. It wasn't that easy. But your question is the question is is it, you know, I've, I've I've talked to people and they a lot of times they'll, they'll go direct and then they'll reamp the bass. How do you feel about um, that? I feel that you can run into a lot of phase problems right there. And if you if you don't have a very trained ear for phase, then you could be doing worse than just using one signal. Because if you don't understand how to listen for phase, and it's it's very difficult to listen to. It took me a long time to understand when to press the phase button and when not to. Just experiment it, listen to see if the bass is cutting out, and if you push it in, see if it adds more bass, and then that's what it is. If you, if you reamp it and it's out of phase, and I've done this before, and we, we went through a uh, whole series of trying to do this uh, on, on an album I did, a uh, Super Mercado record, we ended up having to reamp it again because I, I, it was out of phase. 
So when two things are out of phase, the more you turn them up, the less volume you get. So we kept saying, why can't we hear the bass? And we were turning it up because we were using both signals. And it was out. So, yeah, it don't notice. Sometimes you might not notice that until it's really late in the process, and then it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's, it's better to get uh, the phase situation on first. You can reamp. I, I've done reamping before, for sure. They make, a, I think it's IBS makes a box that actually uh, uh, is for reamping, and it's got a phase uh, switch that is not just 180 degrees. It's actual variable so you can kind of twist it to different degrees and, and hear hear it you know because sometimes things aren't exactly out of phase you know what I mean but so, and sometimes when you hit the button it helps and sometimes it doesn't so it's phase is a very difficult thing to to kind of comprehend but it is also when you're using multiple mics it's also going to be one of the most important you know a, a very important part of your recording process because uh, if you have things in phase it's just not going to sound as full particularly a bass a snare or a kick drum and stuff like that aren't gonna aren't gonna sound as good. But you can always reamp, just send a signal to your amp and then make sure you have a phase button to listen to because it generally is a good chance it will be out of phase by the time you send it to uh, you know, from your DAW to an amp and then back to the DAW, there's a good chance that it's gonna get out of phase by then. So I I would generally say it's best to try to amp it at first if you can. That that'd be I, I like to do it like that myself, so Okay.